Good afternoon, I'm Devin Michael with the sixth program in the Limwalkers series concerning work ethic certification for high school students. My guest is Bernie Henry, Vice President of Human Resources at Alverno Laboratories. Welcome to our program, Bernie. Thank you so much, Dev. So the topic of today's show is honest and dependable. Why did you choose this topic? I chose it because it's essential. It's about the inner core of someone, and your behaviors make your habits. And so what we're talking about is if you decide to be honest and dependable, you'll repeat those things over and over again. If you don't decide to be honest and dependable, well, then you'll look at certain temptations. And that when temptation comes, you may not be honest and you may not be dependable. You need to have a solid decision that you yourself have made. And that's the essential of understanding your own internal core. So is it important to be honest and dependable at whatever job you have, or are there some jobs where it's more important, maybe at a bank or a medical job? Well, indeed, the impact of your behavior is very important. And so if you're not going to be honest, people will not trust you. And you'll have two problems. One will be with your customer, and the other will be with your internal colleagues, because they're not going to be able to count on you to do a good job. Certainly those things that have impact that is lasting, that is not able to be repaired, those items require more honesty because you really can't make a mistake. You know, in the medical field, if I have you and I'm told I'm going to remove your right leg and then I take off your left leg, you will not be happy. I need to be honest and dependable. We went in with this purpose and we knew, did, did what we did and we had to do it right. So should honesty be taught to young children so they'll remember to tell the truth their whole life, since not being honest can many times get into more trouble than what you did in the first place? Well, you know, honesty starts the slippery slope. And what they say is if you decide to tell a lie, you have the difficulty that you have to remember your lie. And if you build on your lie, and then you're into it, and you have three lies later, sometimes you forget what your original lie was. And so it is important, again, to make that decision to develop the internal human being who has value. And certainly, where do you get your values from? You get them from your experiences from the very beginning with the people who are around you and who surround you and those who take responsibility, typically your parents. And then you go off to school and you have the same thing. Your people are going to teach you and you need to decide whether you're going to follow the instructions. So why should someone be honest about a situation that may have consequences either for themselves or a coworker? Well, does the end justify the means? If you indeed are going to have an impact on the coworker or out on an outcome and that outcome will not be healthy, you have a choice to make. Is my choice a healthy choice or is it an unhealthy choice? And sometimes, unfortunately, people find that an unhealthy choice is disguised as if it was a healthy choice. And then they find it has a bad impact and it comes back to harm them or harm someone else. And they lament, oh, I shouldn't have done that. So how do you repair that? Well, you need to again decide, my choices will be healthy choices. I will reject the unhealthy choice. And so a priori, you've decided that honesty is the proper choice. Dishonesty is not the proper choice. It has unhealthy outcomes. And so make the choice that's the healthy choice and do not repeat unhealthy choices. So what does being dependable involve? Dependable involves that I am going to do what I say I'm going to do. If I need to impose an outside structure upon you so that I can depend upon you, what element is missing? It's your personal element that is missing. I really would prefer that when the supervisor walks away that we can count on you being dependable and that you are going to do what needs to be done regardless of the supervision that is on hand. 
In a similar world, if you're going to school, we have somebody there called the principal. You know, that ends in P-A-L. Well, I would much prefer that you exercise the principle that ends in P-L-E. And so if you have good basic principles that drive your life, that guide you along the way, and one of those is your own personal decision to be dependable, to be counted on, to enjoy giving service, then you will be a more healthy human being. And that's what basically we want. I don't want to just pay you. I want you to thrive as a human being. And by being dependable, you'll thrive. And then you can get a promotion because we can count on you. So can a person who's not very dependable be taught this work ethic? Not being dependable is really a behavior. And the behavior is what makes it on display. And so if you decide to be different and try to do different behaviors, yes, you can be taught. It's called fake it until you make it. You need to be like this, and so you plan again. Planning is so very important. You plan to display better behaviors. And as you repeat these behaviors, you will become an expert at that behavior Similar, when you get on the stage and you're acting, all of a sudden, after many repetitions, you become the role and you display it well. Same thing in life. You can learn these things, but it's good to have a plan. So if you're not always honest or dependable, could it affect whether you advance in your career or stay at the same level or maybe even be demoted? Well, indeed, if you cannot be counted on when you're going to work and you're in your career, there's going to be a process of evaluation. People are always looking and observing and seeing the product of your work. And so if the product of your work is insufficient, you will not advance. Because understand what happens. It's you versus the standard. It's you versus the norm. At work, they'll call these things policies. You have to follow the policy. And so it's your self-measurement. You can have a boss, but the boss is going to measure you against the criteria of that piece of work. What makes that quality work? And you know what quality work displays? It displays your interior character. I can go around my shop and I can look and see the surroundings and how people maintain control over their position and I can tell you a lot about their personality. So how can you determine if someone is an honest person and is also dependable during a job interview? Oh, that's probably one of the most difficult things because in a half hour I'm supposed to make that assessment. But what we typically do in a behavioral interview is ask you to tell us about when you were honest. When did you have a difficulty? Have you ever been dishonest? Tell me a time when you were dependable and how you displayed your dependability. Those are the typical questions that you'll receive that you'll need to respond to, and that's how we will attempt to measure you. There are personality inventories and those types of things that some companies do, but it's not really the end of the world, and typically more often you get a half-hour interview. So in, a, in relation to your job and human resources, how do you deal with employees that are dishonest and not dependable? Well, we have a code of conduct. And if you falsify a document or if you steal, which are signs of dishonesty, well, then we'll look at what the policy says. And if you're a thief or you falsify a document, well, the policy is going to say you need to be separated from your employment. If there's tiny mistakes, you'll get a chance and there'll be a progressive discipline. And one time we'll say, well, look at this behavior, because you need to understand it's a behavior. This behavior does not match the standard. And I would ask you then, are you able to make a change? And if you tell me yes, then I say, I will count on it. But one thing has to be known, you may not repeat your mistake. You need to take methods and actions to no longer display the inappropriate behavior. And so that's typically what needs to be done. We're constantly bringing it back to you. You are the master of your craft and you need to make the decisions. It can't be done from the outside. It has to be done from the inside, but you will be measured against the standard. 
So do you ever have supervisors who come to you for help with situations like these? Oh, indeed, all the time, because the human dynamic is always present at work. And many are the variables that we need to look at. You need to do something called intake. You need to have an understanding. You need to be circumspect, which means we need to look all around and find out what is happening. Sometimes it's not really the employee, it's our work system, and the work system could be at fault. And so we need to be careful to refrain from blame until we understand each circumstance. And in human resources, what you'll always hear, it all depends. It depends on the circumstances. We need to find out what those are, understand those. Then we need to coach. And so one of the key components is, can my supervisor say to the employee, are you coachable? And if they tell me, well, no, I'm not coachable, well, then the cause is lost. Most people will respond, yes, I am coachable. But what does that do? It means that you have your own personal responsibility to fulfill. And that's what work is all about. Each employee has an individual employee responsibility to fulfill. And that's what the supervisor needs to do. Measure the behavior against our standard. So since you chose the topic of being honest and dependable, how has this helped you in your career? Well, it's been very important that one always present what a work product needs to be. And a work product is the focus. And so what is going to make this work product the best work product that we can perform? Well, I can't go around and say, hey, well, I won't give my opinion, I'll hold it back, I'll say something dishonest about this work product. That means that the work product will not become the best work product that it can be. So my focus is to work in colleagueship with others. A lot of it is working on teams, and one needs to have a disposition to indeed be honest, but focusing on the ultimate aim and objective, which is to produce a good work product. So what is the importance of this work ethic? The importance of this work ethic is this is part of our dynamic of the human community, which needs to work together so that we can accomplish our aims and objectives. Without these, there will be no trust. And lacking in trust, we won't be able to progress. So do you have any final comments you'd like to add about being honest and dependable? Make that decision for yourself. Practice it. Plan on how you're going to display it. And you will be a success. That's what we're looking for. All right. Thank you very much. My pleasure. So that was Bernie Henry, Vice President of Human Resources at Alverno Laboratories. Today we discussed the topic being honest and dependable and why this is an important work ethic. Lim Walkers comes to you on the first Tuesday of each month at 4 p.m. The program is also available on YouTube. Stay tuned for a new topic and guest on the next program. I'm Devin Michael. Thank you for listening.